So let's move into a breathing technique. I'm going to use the box breathing technique. It's pretty simple. It's a box simply because we're going to be breathing in for four seconds. We'll hold our breath for four seconds. We'll breathe out for four seconds. And we'll hold our breath again for four seconds. It's slightly unusual because you're going to be holding your breath on the exhale, which can be sometimes a little bit jarring because a lot of people are maybe used to just holding their breath on the inhale. But it's the first step towards a breath practice that we will build into our own meditations as we move forward. But even if you've already meditated, if you already have a practice, just give this a try. Because this is a step towards understanding how we can influence the nervous system. The breathing is a trigger to the mind, just alerting it to the fact that right now, when you're breathing and you're in the space where you're sitting with yourself and your eyes are closed, that you are not under threat. You are safe in this moment. And we're moving this sympathetic fight, flight and freeze or the low grade anxiety whether it's on or just low grade, we're starting to teach it that it's okay. Move to parasympathetic. Move to rest and digest. That movement to homeostasis. And all things within mindfulness are geared towards finding a sense of balance, a sense of equilibrium. And the reason why we look for that sense of balance and equilibrium is really quite simple. If we continuously pursue the highs in life, they are inevitably followed by the lows in life. So often our life, or maybe your life now, can often feel like a Richter scale. It can be like a high, something's great, and then, oh, I feel really low again, and I look for the next high, and then I feel low again. And the, the lows can be oh, scrambling and trying to find and attach yourself to the next big outcome that's going to lift my mood. And then you find it, and then you start to race towards that high, only to be disappointed again as you go to another low. And then the chase is back on again, chasing the next Thing, the next thing that ups the momentum to your high. What we want to try and create is a more fluid ebb and flow of life. So there are good times, there are challenging times, there are good times, there are challenging times. There are not extreme highs and there are not extreme lows. It doesn't mean that challenges don't arrive that can be outside of your control. Of course they do. But we're cultivating the whole idea of stepping away from pursuing the highs, creating a semblance of balance, harmony, homeostasis, equilibrium, a better place to try and operate from. So that in mind, Let's practice box breathing. Just get yourself in a supportive and upright position where your back is maybe a little bit out from the, the chair, but in an upright and attentive position. Always within mindfulness and meditation, we're seeking the capacity to fall awake, not to fall asleep. So we don't want to be in a position where as we close our eyes and slow down our breathing or move into practice later on as we move towards meditation, that the body feels like it's an invitation to sleep. And as you will hear me say during the guidance for meditation to come, just as we are now with breathing, this can be practiced with the eyes closed. And ideally, if you can close the eyes, it can be quite helpful because it just takes away another point of distraction, which is all that we see within our 
vision around us and our periphery vision. But if you have a problem practicing with your eyes closed, you can also just allow the gaze to fall down at maybe a 45 degree angle, finding a spot or something in front of you that you can draw your attention to, just resting your gaze in that point. You almost look to just sit your gaze there long enough so that you lose focus. But if you can, try it with your eyes closed. Again, while seated, you can either have your feet flat on the floor, as I do now, you may have your legs crossed, or you can also lie on the floor. And if you're lying on the floor, just have your hands resting down by your side and allow your feet to just fall away from each other. It's up to you, seated or lying down. My preference always for my own practice is to be seated. It just allows me to be a little bit more attentive in the context of what I'm practicing. So in order to start with our meditation practice, I'll sound a bell to signify the start of our practice. And again, at the end of our practice, I'll also sound a bell. So you can just follow the guidance until such time as I sound the bell for a second time, which will signify the end of this breathing practice. So when you're ready, you can close your eyes. So we'll start by taking in a nice deep breath, just filling up the lungs and the abdomen, and then breathing out slowly. Maybe just noticing where you best find or notice your own breath. Breath at times is the anchor during our meditation practice. So that might be the inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. Some people can notice the, the change in the air temperature through that breathing practice. You may find it easier to notice the breath through the rise and fall of the belly, of the abdomen. So as you take in a breath, the belly is rising. As you breathe out, it's falling. And again, as you cultivate this practice, it might help just to place a hand on the belly, on the abdomen, just to notice this as you develop this particular practice. From a personal pers perspective, I've always found it easier to notice the breath on the belly, but it's, it's very much up to whatever feels best for you. So we're sitting here now just taking this time to just notice the breath. Just move towards the box breathing technique. So we'll take a nice deep breath in, filling up the lungs and the belly as I count to four. One, two, three, four. And hold the breath there four. One, two, three, four. Exhaling. One, two, three, four. Holding the breath. One, two, three, four. Again, taking in a breath. One, two, three, four. Holding the breath, one, two, three, four. 
Exhaling. One, two, three, four. Holding the breath. One, two, three, four. Just allow the breath to return to its natural rhythm for a moment. Are you just seeing if you could notice the breath at your anchor point? The inhale to the nose or an exhale to the mouth or rise and fall to the belly. Just bring your attention, awareness just to the breath as it moves to its natural rhythm. Maybe just taking a moment to notice the sounds around you. Maybe just notice the sounds that you might hear just in the room or outside the room. Now let's return back to the breathing technique again. So once more, when you're ready, just take a nice deep inhale, counting to four. One, two, three, four. Holding, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, Four, holding, one, two, three, four. Again, take a nice deep breath in, one, two, three, four, holding, one, two, three, four, exhaling, one, two, three, four, holding, one, two, three, four. One more time, we'll just go for another two rounds of box breathing. So breathing in, one, two, three, four, holding, one, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four, holding, one, two, three, four. Last one, breathing in, one, two, three, four, holding, one, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four, holding, one, two, three, four. Again, now just allow the breath to return to its natural rhythm. When you're ready, and if it feels comfortable, now just open your eyes. So that's just a very gentle entry point into breathing and into a little bit of practice. Tomorrow, or for the next lesson, if you're listening today again, we'll move towards our first guided meditation. But the box breathing itself is something that you can use throughout your day and whenever really you need it. Box breathing is a technique that goes back a long way in history. So it was used by ancient warriors 
in order to prepare for battle. It's also used in professional sport. So within the world of professional sport, the box breathing technique is used a lot by sports psychologists. I've used it myself with professional athletes. It's very helpful in a time of stress to bring somebody level and present and in this moment so that they can connect into flow state. They're separate away from the noise and the chaos in their head or the emotion of the event, which can often be a penalty kick in soccer or kicking for a field goal in American football or kicking for um, a conversion in professional rugby. These are major moments, often with stadiums filled with 80,000 people, where the player and the athlete needs to be able to stay absolutely focused and in that moment, remembering all of the past successes, all the reasons why he knows he has the capacity to commit and deliver without the distraction of everything else that's going on around him. So for you in everyday life, the box breathing technique is helpful before you walk into a stressful situation, maybe a difficult meeting or a negotiation, or maybe even a challenge at home, a difficult conversation with a loved one or a teenager. Before you have to go in there and you know that you're likely just to react, take a moment, take a breath, and use the box breathing technique. 